Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator, esthetician, lover of new sunscreen innovations, and boy, do I got an innovation for you today. I love coming on here talking about new sunscreens, new innovation in UV technology. One of like the leaders in doing that right now in the market, L'Oreal, came out with a new UV filter that they launched in their La Roche-Posay sunscreens. And today we're talking about a few new La Roche-Posay sunscreens in their Anthelios line that feature this new patented UV technology. So breaking it down for you guys, I have three Three new sunscreens. These came out. I actually don't know. I looked into it and people were saying something as early as back in November these might have launched. I kind of only heard about these back in like January, February. I couldn't get my hands on them here for a minute and then once I could they were like not consistently at every boot. So regardless. So I have three sunscreens from the Anthelios line. So first of all it's called their UV Mune 400 line. The new filter is called Mex Oral 400 but I'll get into that a bit. But the three sunscreens I have. Anthelios UV Mune 400 Hydrating Cream. Their Anthelios UV Mune 400 Invisible Fluid. And then their Anthelios UV Immune 400 Tinted Fluid. Basically, my understanding is that these are replacing the old Anthelios formulas that these are updates for. So for example, we know the famous Invisible Fluid from the Anthelios line. Basically, this UV Immune 400 is the new replacement of it because it's basically sort of, it's not the same formula, I'm gonna be really honest, but it's a similar formula that features the new UVA filter. So let me break down what this marketing looks like for these new sunscreens, how La Roche-Posay is selling this new sunscreen, this new filter, this new technology, and then I will break down why why this technology is actually really cool and actually very important. So from their specific L'Oreal La Roche-Posay website, very high UVA EBB facial sun protection, our ultimate protection with ultra long UVA protection. This could be a drinking game. Take a shot for every time I say protection. Ultra resistant formula specifically developed for sensitive skin. Always a little bit of a <laughs> reach. And Thelio CV Mune 400 invisible fluid. This is who I pulled it from. It, this specific one is not scented, but not all of them are. With new exclusive Mixoral 400, our new UV filter against ultra long UVA rays to help protect against UV induced damage. Our ultimate protection, which is UVB plus UVA plus ultra long UVA, a very high protection that is ultra resistant to water, sweat, and sand. They also claim anti-eye stinging, that they are all invisible, lightweight texture, and non-greasy. Specifically, all these have very minimalistic formulas supposed to give you the best UV protection while being hopefully a good option for sensitive skin while also being super heavy duty. They also claim that these are tested and retested for efficacy and mildness on sensitive skin and also hyperallergenic. The claims for that specific ultra long UVA and kind of breaking down why the filter itself is really important. So they actually talk about it a lot on the packaging. The UVA range itself is from 340 to 400 nanometers on the UV absorption spectrum. I'll have like a little chart up here if you want a visual. Ultra long UVA is the latter half of that from 380 to 400 nanometers. So that's ultra, ultra long UVA rays. And realistically, very few UV filters have adequate protection in that field. Usually their peak absorption is a little bit below that and they're kind of wavering off by that point. Whereas this new filter, I'm gonna get into actually has a peak much higher up and has really good solid protection up through the 400 range actually into what is considered visible light. So a little bit of tea on this new filter. The trade name for this is Mixoral 400 but the actual name for it it's abbreviated MCE and that's how I'm going to say it but the full name for it is Methoxypropylamino Cyclohexanilidine Ethoxyethylcyanoacetate aka MCE. So some research I pulled up to it and I'll actually link all the resources I pulled for this video for this research part down in the description box if you care to read it. The specific paper on the MCE filter is very interesting. For the first time, thanks to MCE filtering properties, a full coverage of the whole UV spectrum up to 400 nanometers was reached, leading to a higher filter protection against UVA1 induced biological and clinical impacts. Why this focus on the longer wavelength UVA rays is important. While these longer wavelength UVA rays are less energetic than UVB rays, they are actually more present here on Earth's surface and they can penetrate a lot deeper into the skin so they can reach the actual dermis. So that's the part below the epidermis. And at the biological level, they lead to reactive oxygenative species, which is is basically free radical damage and can do a lot of bad things to cellular DNA at that level. So basically with MCE now being a thing, you're able to cover the 360 to 400 nanometer part of the UV absorption spectrum. The filter was approved by the European Commission as proven safe for the environment and on people. And it's an authorized UV filter, hence why it's now on the market. And it's approved up to a percentage of 3%. And it's super, super, super stable. The MCE filter has a peak absorption of 385. So very high up in that part of the UVA spectrum. Also is very, very stable. Just left in the formula, it's up to 100% stable. So 100% of it is still present at the end of the testing period. And through different levels of exposure to different things, upwards of still 96% to 100% is still present and stable in the formula after a few hours to a few days. Again, the tests for these are going to be in the description box if you care to read them. So why this is important, today's sunscreens generally should all be broad spectrum, which means that they have absorption and protection capabilities from UV 
the B up through UVA rays, but the extent of into UVA is where things get a little bit question mark. Avobenzone, for example, is one of the most longer wavelength UVA filters that we have available, but avobenzone is notoriously instable unless it's paired with certain other filters or other sunscreen technologies, which it generally always is. That's nothing to really be concerned about. But as you can see on this chart I'm gonna have here on the screen, you have avobenzone and you can see while it does get into the UVA1 range, its peak is lower than the new MCE filter and it starts to fall once it gets towards that 400 nanometer part of the spectrum. And so this is where the MCE filter comes in and why it's so cool is that the peak absorption extends beyond where those sunscreen filters even do a lot of work and extends into the 400 range, which we consider visible light. So this is just a really cool sunscreen innovation and clearly you can tell how excited I am about it. And also worth noting, MCE is a soluble filter, which means that it is basically a liquid. There's no insoluble particles, so it's not gonna be like a mineral S chemical filter like Tinosorb M that could potentially cause a white cast. My friend Julian, AKA Scamander, did review a couple of these. They look amazing on his skin and I'll have those reviews down below in the description box as well. So all that being said, let's get into the sunscreen. So again, I have three sunscreens. I'm gonna start with the invisible fluid, kind of like the replacement for the OG, really, really famous Anthelios one. Formulation wise, this does have alcohol. These do all have alcohol. So, and that's where the claims about sensitive skin friendly things kind of gets a little bit interesting, but L'Oreal, La Roche say they do specific testing around eye sensitivity, skin sensitivity and all that stuff. And even with the alcohol, they're claiming that it's gonna be a good option for sensitive skin, but always subjective. This does have vitamin E and glycerin and then UV filters. And this is pretty consistent for all of these. The order might change though. You have octosalate, Tinosorb S, Uvenol T150, Avobenzone, this new MCE filter, Uvenol A+, Mixoral XL and Mixoral SX. Those Mixorals are the L'Oreal patented filters. So you're getting really good. Basically you have broad spectrum and then you got a lot of bumps and a lot of fortifying in each part of the UV filter spectrum. Obviously this is SPF 50 plus. In terms of UV APF rating, the original Anthelios was very, very famous for having a UV APF of I believe 46, somewhere in the mid 40 range, which is ultra, ultra high. And La Roche still advertises this as having an ultra high PPD, AKA persistent pigment darkening rating, which essentially kind of correlates in a sense to UV APF protection level. A lot of people are speculating on Reddit because apparently Reddit is the hub of all things accurate in science, that this has to exceed that. And I would agree. I believe this has to at least match that 46 or whatever UVA PF. If not, it potentially does exceed it just with that extra added benefit of the UVA long wavelength protection. So, but nowhere on the bottle, on the box, does it state anything? Nowhere on the La Roche-Posay website does it state what an actual rating is, but do know it most likely is really up there. I also do not have a boot star rating on this either. But application wise, so how I did it for all these sunscreens, I obviously have my scale and then I always use my little quarter teaspoon measuring spoon just to see what it looks like when it's actually measured out. And for my face, based off of measurements, I know that I need 0.8 grams for my face. And I put this in my little quarter teaspoon. It fills up more than half of it just because it is a more lightweight texture, but it is a watery AF formulation. I think this is even thinner than the original invisible fluid. Just putting that out there. I just rub it into my skin, work it in. It just sinks in, melts away instantly. But what's interesting about this texture as opposed to the original Anthelios is that it like sets down almost instantly. So I like do one pass and it's already starting to sit down into like an interestingly tacky texture so that after a swipe, I can't really go back and swipe on top of it. It's kind of set down and it doesn't give me a lot of slip, but it's invisible. It sets in really quick. It's a super, super ultra lightweight texture, which I'm actually obsessed with. You can see though, it has a glow. It's a radiant texture. I don't find it to be emollient though. There's not like, as I mentioned, there's not a slip. There's not a greasiness. No, there's not an emollients to it, but I do have a very natural radiant glow, which I love. I think it's a very oily skin appropriate glow. Obviously if you want matte, this isn't going to be the option for you, but when you get into these levels of protection, you're going to have to compromise an element of elegance and matteness is definitely going out the window. Just going to be honest with you. But if that's an issue, just powder. Super easy. Goes on amazing, works in instantly, sets down super quick, no facial hair issues. I don't have issues with eye stinging, but my eyes didn't sting with this. And again, this is ultra water, sweat, and sand resistant. That sand resistant, if you didn't know, basically means that sand doesn't stick to you, apparently, I found out. And makeup wears beautifully on top of this. It's literally like a second skin, if I'm gonna be honest. But let's get to the tinted one, because I saw a tinted and I was like, why is it tinted? MCE is a soluble filter. So I was really interested to see why this was tinted, but basically looking at the formulation, literally the exact same, except this does have fragrance in it. No essential oil, but it does have alcohol and it does have fragrance in it. So worth noting, but it still has the glycerin. It still has the vitamin E, but this does have titanium dioxide. It does have a few different iron oxides and it has perlite, which I think that might lend itself to like some radiance, some pigment suspension, I'm not entirely sure. As you can see with this tinted one, obviously it has a tint and the tint is neutral, which always concerns me because these tinted sunscreens always lean neutral or cool. I'm warm olives. So when I put them on, I go gray. Melts in, wet tints. Where is the sunscreen? Melts right in, super invisible. And you can see I work it in everywhere 
wear, no cast, no weird coloration issues, no clumping or collecting in my facial hair. And I even take a little bit extra and I put it on my under eyes to see like, can it camouflage any of my discoloration? And I don't see it doing so. But again, once it sets down, my face has this like veil of like, you have something on, but you don't have something on. You just look a little bit more airbrushed, but it still looks like your skin. You can still see your imperfections, but you just look a little hair better. So the tint doesn't really translate too much on me. And again, this wears beautifully under makeup. I love the finish of this just alone on my skin. This just gives me kind of your skin, really just your skin, but just a little bit better. I love the glow this gives me. I would wear this out of the house as is. Might blot a little bit, but the finish on this is beautiful, gorgeous, and my skin looks amazing. So I'm on a toss up as to which one I prefer the most between the invisible or the tinted, but they're both so nice. But it has the same exact texture as the invisible fluid. It goes on beautiful. In terms of the coverage of it, and that's why I just don't, I don't understand why. There's not really coverage. It's sheer, 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 but it looks beautiful on the skin. I'm wearing it underneath my foundation today. Obsessed, so it wears great under makeup. With the pigments, obviously I see titanium dioxide, I see the iron oxides. So my concern is, is it gonna be weird in the facial hair? Can't clock it. Not in the hairline of the eyebrows, works in beautifully. And again, it's just super lightweight. It looks amazing on the skin. It blends in effortlessly. I like it, I like it a lot. Julian though, did not get it because he saw tinted and that was a red flag for him. So I do not know how this is gonna look on deeper skin tones, I'm gonna be honest. But regardless, just get the invisible one if that's the case. But I would be interested, if anyone knows what the tinted version looks like on deeper skin, please let me know. Tag who applied it because I just wanna see. But yeah, super obsessed with this. And then the added benefits of the iron oxides and whatnot is it really does level up the protection in what is that visible light spectrum. Iron oxides do provide a level of protection in the high energy visible light. So that 400 and above part of the UV spectrum, which I just like to see because it's a nice benefit. I always tell people I don't like tinted sunscreens necessarily because they always have these iron oxides and they kind of claim blue light protection. But then realistically, I don't think they're very good for deeper skin tones. There's a level of non-inclusivity in that part. And on top of that, I'm just like, just get an invisible sunscreen and wear a foundation on top where you're gonna get more iron oxide. So eat more of that protection in a shade that actually work for you. But with this, I do recommend an iron oxide situation, especially if you have deeper skin tones like that Fitzpatrick 4 and above, just because high energy visible light does tend to exacerbate pigmentation related issues in those photo types on the Fitzpatrick scale. So I like to see them, but I prefer to have those in a foundation just because you get a tinted sunscreen in one shade that can work for like this medium skin tone range. But if you're anything above, especially that dark to deep dark range, you're kind of left out and then it's like, what's the point? You understand? That's why I kind of want to see what this looks like because it is so sheer in my mind that this might, but I'm not going to say it will, work on a dark skin tone, doubt that it looks good on a deep skin Tone. Getting on to the last one. This is their hydrating cream. This is supposed to be the option for dry skin. Looking at the claim specifically for this one. So again, that very high UVA protection in this broad spectrum sunscreen, any moisturizing formula for dry to very dry skin. Our ultimate protection, UVA, blah, 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 blah. A lot of the same things, Mixoral 400. And they say this is an ultra comfortable cream formula. It's a hydrating cream that's non-greasy and this is also not scented. So this is the only other one that does not have perfume, but it still does have alcohol in it. And again, minimalistic formula. So that is hopefully good for sensitive skin blah, blah, blah. Literally all the same claims. The thing with this, and same UV filters, just they flipped a few of them around. So I guess that kind of aids in more of that moisturizing texture. This, as you can see on the skin, goes on and it gives me a glow. And it's a cream. It's definitely much more cream than the other ones, which those are like watery liquids. This is definitely a cream formula. This is not greasy. I actually argue that this is actually very moisturizing because I put this on and I was like, oh, this sets down. And again, it doesn't have an emollient that is kind of greasy. It doesn't have an emollient that's very slippy. It kind of has the same texture as the other ones when they set down where I don't get a lot of slip and I have a glow, but it's not heavy, it's not greasy, and it's actually very lightweight. So if you're like oily skin and you like a radiant glow, this could be a good option for you to check out. If you don't care for a matte finish necessarily, this is actually a very, very nice cream texture. And that's why I'm like, is this good for dry skin? Because I'm looking at the ingredients list. There's not any like fatty alcohols, there's no caprylocopic triglyceride, there's no oils, which you normally see, especially in one of these like super high photo protection, water resistant, sweat resistant formulations. It's a very elegant moisturizing sunscreen. And so I'm wondering, is this really good for dry skin? Because even Julian really loves it. And Julian has combination skin, but again, you can see it goes on invisible, super elegant, makeup wears amazingly on top of this as well, no facial hair issues. Overall, I really, really like this as well. So I'm looking at all these, I'm like, these are amazing sunscreens. I love, not only did they add this new technology, but I think the formulas for these actually improved as well. Price point for these varies. Right now on Boots, which is where I got these, I think they normally retail for like 18 pounds, but there's a special offer. So two of these are like 13.50 each. So you can always get a good sale, which makes it decently affordable. And then packaging wise, I was talking to Julian about this because Julian hates this tube packaging. I actually don't mind it. I hate this kind of packaging for these because this formula is so runny that getting it out, I'm always worried about it dribbling everywhere and whatnot. So I'm not a huge fan of this, but obviously with these two, you want to shake them because these are super watery and you can hear there is one of those little balls just to make sure everything's nicely evenly distributed like it should be. Whereas this one, 
doesn't have that, it's just a nice cream. So I actually like all three of these, depending on what the vibe is for the day, what the feel is, what I need, I would rotate all three of these hands down. I like all of these equally, and it might just be for little things that I would choose one over the other. But I think these are great formulations, super fun, super exciting. Let me know down below in the comments section. Have you tried these? What's your experience with these? Also tell me what your skin type is, especially if you're sensitive or you have sensitive eyes. Did they sting or did you have any irritation issues? Just because I like to have those for anyone looking in the comment section for other user experience in those areas specifically. And if I find your comment helpful, I might pin it. But yeah, let me know. Have you tried these? What your thoughts are and what your experiences are? Do you love these as much as I do? Because very excited and very much obsessed with these. Let me know what other sunscreens you want me to try. I've recently heard things like Aven and Eucerin have relaunched reformulations of sunscreens that I've tried before. But let me know anything that I haven't mentioned that you want to see me try on the channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fun tea related content on my channel. Leave a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.